You are watching the Global Gamers Invitational Tournament brought to you by iFixit, SCVs for the real world, the handsome nerd, attire for the handsomest of nerds, and eSports United, sponsored by Intel. This broadcast is also made possible by IC Cup TV, TeamLiquid.net, and of course, Blizzard Entertainment. Hey, hello everyone, this is Mac with another match from the Global Gamers Invitational. This is the round of 32 best of three series, once again sponsored by iFixit, SCVs for the real world, Esports United, and of course, the Handsome Nerd. This game between Mardo as the Green Zerg and his opponent Inna, the Red Terran. So this is a Zerg versus Terran match and we are on Metalopolis. So a pretty, pretty uh, exciting matchup, almost certainly going to see some Terran mech coming from this red Terran player, and uh, we'll see how Mardo deals with this. We could see either some early aggression, Zerglings and Banelings, but perhaps the more likely out, uh, likely course, which would be mass expansions, and doing his best to deal with the supposedly unbeatable Terran mechs. We'll see what happens here. Uh, so far, Mardo uh, playing very, very standard economic build, getting that uh, extractor trick, and the early Overseer, or rather Overlord, and we'll just be uh, going a 14 spawning pool, 15 hatchery it seems, and sending a scouting drone as his overlord did not find his opponent's base. And meanwhile, in Inna's base, he has laid down this supply depot over here, uh, that probably for detection or later in the game, doesn't want to put any supply depots on his choke point so that his opponent can't use a bailing bust against him. It's uh, a bit unfortunate that we have seen this sort of evolution in Zerg vs. Terran lately, which is that uh, the Baneling Bust is just a little bit too potent, so Terran simply can't put Supply Depots in that wall off. But by not putting Supply Depots, they can just solve the problem completely. And then late game, Zerg are struggling an awful lot to deal with uh, deal with Siege Tanks, Thors, and Mass Marines. So the Scout from Marta will get in, gets stuck a little bit on those SCVs, and is able to get inside and take a look around. He's going to notice this early refinery already uh, fully manned and so now he's gonna go check real quick yes there is a tech lab so you think he's seen everything he needs to see there are, are incoming reapers uh, meanwhile in his SCV has arrived and is scouting his opponent's base sees that spawning pool a little bit of a late spawning pool but uh, does know about this hatchery probably gonna lay down a bunker maybe not looks like he is retreating and then turning around so I guess he is going to lay a bunker looks like right about here there it is and uh, the Reaper is on its way, and this, this first drone beginning to pull out. So income-wise, our players are more or less tied. Uh, no armies to speak of. And we are seeing that Bunker and Reaper for Inna. So some early aggression to try and uh, maybe deny this hatchery. And I don't even think this was detected. It looks like Mardo just sent drones to attack a Bunker. He just knew would be there because he scouted that Reaper. And he is going to catch this SCV. Finishes off an SCV. He could have just plop, plopped that into the bunker. So a bit of a mistake there by Inna. And it looks like he he might actually lose this bunker to uh, the combined attacks of four drones. And uh, finally some Zerglings. The drones can stop killing this bunker by themselves. And it looks like this Reaper is going to be a little bit too late. Probably going to snipe a couple Lings. But his bunker is destroyed. Will not be salvaged in time. So uh, trading an SCV in a bunker. 250 resources. That doesn't sound right at all. Should be 150. What else did he lose? Well, whatever it was, uh, he has lost it and uh, trying his best to micro this Reaper around, get some drones and some Zergling kills, but unfortunately uh, the creep speed advantage a little bit too strong for uh, the Zerg player. So Inna is going to be forced just to settle for a few Zergling kills and that Queen is finally up and the Reaper forced to retreat. But it looks like meanwhile in his base, Inna is not committing to this early harassment. He is expanding in parallel. A good response. He can't take out that expansion, so he may as well build one of his own. And this Reaper is going to survive to fight another day, or at least to guard a Zelnigo Watchtower, so good for him. And uh, production-wise, we have uh, Zergling Speed coming out for Mardo. Still no uh, Lair tech, so he isn't yet transitioning into Roach Hydra or Mutalisks. Uh, instead, just saturating both of his expansions and uh, throwing down one spine crawler. Clearly a little bit concerned about more harassment. These Lings are not moving out. And I think uh, from an army tap perspective, there are actually more Zerglings than Terran units. Unfortunately, not a very favorable uh, position here. This Hellion could plug this hole quite easily. And uh, those Zerglings would take an awful lot of casualties trying to push through that little gap. 
So I think Inna's base is going to go up unharassed. And uh, a bunker now going down, so it's going to be even harder for these Zerglings to do any effective harassment. So they're going to have to do their best right now. Uh, but instead, Mardo is going to back off, waiting for Zergling speed to kick in. There it is. They're now speedlings. And he finds that Reaper. He's going to be able to kill it off. That's a nice find. So denying some early scouting from his opponent and at least getting a free kill. So he's going to try and break into this base. Uh, it will be difficult for him to do any damage, seeing as how there are now two Hellions and a bunker. But he'll try and focus down his command center. Too many hit points for him to get it even close to bringing down. And some simple micro from the Hellions forces those Zerglings in retreat. Uh, closing that lo unit's lost gap ever so slightly. And it looks like Zergling Harass is now no longer viable. There are enough Hellions and a nice little Sim City here denying any entrance. And uh, we'll see what tech route Mardo takes. He has almost completed his lair, so we're going to see very, very soon what his tech strategy is going to be in Tier 2. Ho hopefully we'll see it right away from these drones. Looks like not. Still hasn't responded to his lair being complete. He's busy elsewhere, I guess. His opponent, meanwhile, is uh, doing a very, very nice job getting two orbital commands, getting tons of mules, two refineries. Definitely need those four refineries to, uh, indeed, four refineries to operate a, an effective mech army. And already he is throwing up a ton of missile turrets, it looks like. Uh, the first of what I expect will be many. We'll uh, pull up the vision there for a second. He hasn't even scouted the Spire. He just knows that his opponent is going to go Mutalisk, so a bit of a blind decision there, but a good one nonetheless. And I think these are Infernal Pre-Ignited Hellions. They are loose on those Zerglings. Uh, the Spine Crawler is nicely positioned, tucked behind these uh, Extractors. So between these two and the Queen, it'll be impossible for Hellions to get in on the drones. But they did get a few Zerglings, so uh, the expensive Hellion cost is being mitigated. And really, all Inna needs to do is delay his opponent. He has his two bases. He can comfortably produce off of several factories, get some Thors, deal with those Mutalisks, and uh, lots of Marines from those, uh, from that, well, no Marines. I guess he isn't building mass bunkers, but probably will. And there we are, torching a few more drones, but the Speedlings do get around, surrounding all of those Hellions, and uh, the timing just wasn't right there for Inna. None of them firing in time, and it looks like you got maybe one Zergling in that encounter, so that did not go well at all, and Mardo looking like he's going to be on the offensive once again. A Zergling streaming across the map, but it's going to take a little bit more than Zerglings to break this defense. The siege tank, and I guess there are no Hellions temporarily, so this is a pretty good moment. Only the one bunker, which he can bypass and maybe get loose on that siege tank, but instead Mardo is intimidated enough to pull back. The Zerglings are not going to engage. Probably a good decision. You know, is very well fortified now with two tanks and that bunker. Looks like he's not producing any more Hellions for the time being, instead transitioning into uh, getting, I guess looks like he's getting more barracks for those marines, lots of turrets going up, a fourth barracks, so he is expecting Mutalisk Harass. I still don't think he even scouted, he has not scouted the Spire at all, just assuming that his opponent is going to do it, and sure enough, there they are, Mutalisks are loose, and uh, too many turrets are up, completely denying any chance of Mutalisk Harass, but at least there's a Supply Depot, that first Supply Depot, but in a laid down, going to be able to finish that off. Maybe uh, take out this missile turret and the supply to keep up this micro. We shouldn't lose, and we will lose one Mutalisk. But uh, able to get a second supply depot, so good for him. And uh, meanwhile, Mardo expanding to his third natural and uh, producing his overlord speed, burrow. So maybe a roach transition is on the way. Hard to tell. We'll see if he does that. Burrowing roach is a very good option against Terran mech. Of course, one uh, raven will effectively counter that. And uh, nice coverage by these missile turrets. They pretty much have every contour of the base blocked. There's really nothing he could snipe except for this reactor. So one reactor is exposed, and Mardo's Mutalisk is able to take that down pretty quick. Scouting SCP meanwhile has found a second expansion for Mardo, so now playing off four bases. So that might be what he needs to do to, to deal with this mech army amassing tons of siege tanks. We are starting to get some marines. They already have their combat shield. And the first Thor is being produced, so Thor's Marine Siege Tanks very effective against uh, Mutalisks and any Zerg ground. Uh, maybe he will throw down a Baneling Nest. He looks like he has thrown down a Baneling Nest. This must be it here. That's an Evolution Chamber. Somewhere out there, there is a Baneling Nest, and I will find it. Just to prove to you that it's there. There it is. That is the Baneling Nest, so he is going to have Banelings for the Marines. 
Mutalisks to get slaughtered by Thors and Roaches to soak up damage. So it'll all come down to timing, I think. If Mardo is able to get enough of those units up before his opponent makes a push, he should have some luck. Unfortunately, these Mutalisks just not able to accomplish a thing against this Terran player. The Thors will counter the Mutalisks so strongly in the field, and there's so many missile turrets denying any harassment opportunities. And in a planning to starport, I'm guessing four Ravens, maybe uh, Medivacs for his Marines. And these Mutalisks able to deny scouting nicely, but that's pretty much all they've been able to do. Barely, uh, I think, paid off their cost in terms of damage done. And uh, a nice force from Mardo here. No upgrades at, done quite yet. But a uh, few Zerglings and Roaches. Armies more or less equal. Finally morphing in some Banelings here on those Zerglings. Quick scan on a nice spot. That's a good call by Inna, knowing where his opponent's army probably going to be massing. Sure enough, there it is. Sees the Banelings, Zergling, Roach composition. So he is pushing out now. Good time. Equal armies. Uh, supply advantage for the Zerg player, but I definitely say a tech advantage for the Terran player. This is a stronger, more robust army. It all comes down to Kendall's Banelings land on the Marines. Here comes the engagement. Several Banelings getting ready to flank. It looks like the Roach is engaging. Queen engaging. Mutalis will be here soon, I'm sure. And the Banelings completely wasted on siege tanks. Only two siege tanks for all of those Banelings. All the Marines are alive, and they are going to absolutely rend all of those mutalisks. The last of the roaches are destroyed and it looks like this is lights out for Mardo. Uh, the Banelinks just did not line up with the right units at all and with those siege tanks and repairing SCVs, tons of marines, Mardo calls GG. Game one of this best of three round of 32 series going to Inna. He is up so we'll have to see if Mardo can even things up in game two. So thanks for tuning in guys. Once again this is Mac with IC Cup TV and uh, be sure to follow this tournament on TeamLiquid.net, where, where there are now more tournaments than I can keep track of, uh, updated on a daily basis. So once again, thanks guys, and until next time, have a good one.